Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, I'm getting cold feet about my pending marriage. I've got an email. This particular guy says he's read 3% Man 10 times and Mastering Yourself three times. He's been following me for about two and a half years. He's, his relationship with his fiance is easy. It's effortless. She loves him. She supports him. Everything seems great. However, she's 12 years older than he is. And so he says as their wedding date is getting closer and closer, he's getting cold feet. And he's basically said he doesn't see himself with her in 20 years. And on top of that, he feels guilty about it, but he says she's starting to show her age. It's Her looks are starting to decline, and he's noticing that. And so his question is, what do I do? This is not a fun place to be, and I can totally relate because I was there at one one point in my life <clears throat> and obviously i went through with the marriage and allowed societal pressure and pressure of the people around me to influence my decision making because i was young i was inexperienced and i didn't have anybody in my family that could give me any decent advice and quite frankly it's not like i would have listened to anybody anyways but there was a lot of pressure to get married and i had a lot of feelings of guilt and the reality is I should have just moved on, moved away, moved to Orlando, maybe dated long distance for a while, and then maybe at some point just started dating other people, and we should have gone our separate ways. But instead, I got married, and the, got married, and the whole time it never felt right. But I just ignored it. I thought, oh, I just got cold feet. That's what all the women that I knew told me. Oh, Corey, you just got cold feet. She's a great girl. That'll go away when you're together for a while. It'll be fine. It's fine. But it wasn't fine. So I could totally feel, because I've done countless phone sessions over the years with guys that are in these kinds of situations where they're, it's kind of like they're on the conveyor belt and they're all caught up in the process. And the reality is they're not doing what they really want to do. They're not listening to their inner intuition. And it's tough to do. Because either way, I mean, it, part you'll see when I go through the email part, what this guy's struggling with is like, if I break, if I end the, in the engagement and call off the marriage, then I'm going to break her heart. And I'm going to feel terrible. If I go through with it, then I'm breaking my own heart and I'm going to feel terrible. So it's like either way, people are going to get hurt. People are going to get upset no matter what he decides, whether it's him or his fiance or the people that are heavily invested in them being together. So he says, good afternoon, coach. I've been following your work for about two and a half years and I've read 3% Man 10 times and Mastering Yourself three times. It has really helped me tremendously both in my professional life and my dating life. Since knowing about your work, I have put in the time and effort to get in shape, be a better business owner, and let go of the beta tendencies that got me in bad situations in the past. I feel that now I'm more in control of my life and my dating relationships have been more successful, so thank you so much for that. Fast forward two years and I've been dating a woman who is 12 years older than me. She's sweet, caring, considerate. She loves me and is there for me anytime I need her. Sex is great and she's very supportive of everything I do. Sounds great, right? What's the problem? There's one catch, however. We have plans to get married and as the date gets closer, I'm starting to get cold feet. I realize her age has something to do with it, and of course her body is starting to show signs of it. Well, the other thing you got to keep in mind is men tend to peak later in life. I mean, I know I'm 52 now, but quite frankly, I feel like I'm kind of just getting started at this where I'm at at this point in my life. Because it takes a lot. I mean, if you, for those of you that read Mastering Yourself, it takes a long time. You got to think in terms of decade when it comes to creating your grandest goals and dreams. And so when I look back at where I was when I was 18 and just starting my career in college and then going through the construction industry, then later on in my late 20s, starting my own business and then building that business up to a successful business. And then in my mid 30s, just hitting the reset button on my life. And so it's interesting from the time I was basically 18 till I was about 36, 
when I started doing what I'm doing now. It was a 16 year period from when I had the desire and started on that path to getting into construction, the real estate, mortgage industry, buying, fixing, and selling and flipping single family homes for a profit, then doing general real estate mortgages, all those things that I, I did. That was a 16 year period. And it took like a minimum of a decade for four things really started doing well. And so but basically the same amount of time has passed from when I started what I'm doing now being a full-time life coach. So it's like 16 years from start to finish for that previous incarnation of me, if you will, or that kind of life and lifestyle. And then here I'm at the same amount of time, 16 16 years down the road. It's taken a long time to get here. I got four books out now. I've got thousands of videos, thousands of articles. We just started finishing and launching our content on my website, the members only stuff and having premium content there for people that really like my stuff and they want to pay to have access to those kinds of things. It's just, just it takes a long time. Success is long in coming. And there's no shortcuts to success. And I think it was Oprah said, you can you can have it all, you just can't have it all at once. And so again, the reality is you gotta think in terms of decades of when it comes to accomplishing big goals and big dreams. And that's why most people never start, because they get caught up in the minutia and they're not disciplined, and success is making progress. If you don't feel like you're making progress towards your grandest goals and dreams, you're not gonna feel very successful and you're not gonna feel very happy of where you're at. So you got to feel like when you look around your life that you're seeing incremental changes and incremental process or progress, I should say. And so it takes a long time. Like I said, 52. And it's, I kind of feel like it's a second go around. Like when I was 36, I literally hit the re... It's like playing a video game. You hit reset on your life and it's like being 18 all over again and just completely starting all over in a completely new industry. And it takes time to build those things. That's why it's so important to choose what you're gonna do for a career, something you love, something you enjoy, because it's going to evolve also. And same thing with the people that you choose to spend your time with. You're obviously in this case, this guy's thinking about marrying this woman, and then it's also who you hang out with, who your friends are, what you do socially, what you do for fun. All that stuff determines and shapes and shapes your destiny and who you eventually become. <clears throat> so back to our regularly scheduled email. He says, I never thought I'd be so vain to care about something like that. However, it really is affecting me. And so like like I was starting to say is that it takes guys, guys don't really tend to peak, if, if you will, until they get in their mid-30s. And that's why I noticed when I got into my mid-30s, women became really aggressive towards me and letting their interest be known. Whereas I remember when I was in my 20s, I had to work harder to get the attention of women. But in the 30s, when I get, especially in mid 30s, it just it came to me. Because it's like once you get to be competent and you have confidence, you just have a vibe of indifference about you that women they can feel it. There's something different about a guy. And it's basically come into his own. Women tend that tends to happen earlier in life because they got a biological clock ticking if they're going to have babies they got the older they get the harder it is for them to conceive especially if they wait to get married and try to start a family and so in his case it's like he's probably kind of starting to feel like man i'm just kind of getting started and here i am with a woman that's 12 years older i don't know how old this guy is he didn't say if i had to guess maybe he's in his late 20s early 30s and so if she's 12 years older, her childbearing years are probably behind her. Unless even with in vitro fertilization, it's like stuff's not easy. It doesn't always work. And it's a lot harder to get pregnant the older you get. And so on some level, he's going to be thinking about that. And that's why us guys, we tend to be attracted to the younger women. You, you have the innocent quality, the... It's because you, if you're going to have a family with somebody, you don't want to be with a girl that's, that's quite frankly been with hundreds of dudes. You want to feel like it's something special that because it's there's nothing. It's not an accomplishment for a beautiful woman to go out and get laid. All she has to do is tap any dude on the shoulder and say, "Hey, you want to go home with me?" 
almost 100% of the guys are like, yeah, sure, let's get out of here. But guys got to work harder at that. And so if you've got a pretty girl who all guys want to sleep with anyways, who's just giving it up to anybody because she doesn't value or respect herself, then you're not, if she doesn't value and respect herself, how is anybody else going to? How is a guy going to do that? So on some level, he's got to be thinking, if he marries her, is he going to forego the possibility of having children just because she's so much older than he is? So that's something that he's got to consider. But I've learned in life that when you go against what your intuition is telling you, with your what your feelings are, it never it never turns out well. And it's like when I was younger, when I was in my early early twenties, I didn't have the confidence, I didn't have the life experience, I didn't have the people around me that I could ask these questions to and get good advice that I can make good, intelligent, informed decisions upon. So I made a lot of mistakes. Obviously, you guys, if you read my books, you know about them all. I mean, made lots of mistakes, but I learned a lot. Part of what I do is pass passing this knowledge on. And if this guy is this, you know, he's getting closer and closer to the wedding, he's getting cold feet, it's like, you got to listen to that. You can't just ignore that. Because if you go through with the marriage, then just talk to any of your friends that have gone through a divorce Ask him how much fun that was. How, ask, ask him how much fun divorce, divorce divorce courts were, and especially if they got kids involved and then fighting over custody and all, all those shenanigans. It's not a lot of fun. So you got to think about – you always got to know what your downside risk is. It's a lot easier to call a wedding off than to go ahead and get married and then still feel the same way and then a year or two down the road decide you're going to get divorced because now you, you, you're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to – you're going to inflate the bank accounts of divorce attorneys. Why would you want to do that? It's just a lot of downside risk. So he says, some days I feel like I would like to marry a younger woman despite my girlfriend being the perfect girlfriend besides the age thing. Yeah, because I would say on some level you're thinking, I'd like to have a family. And if you're with somebody that, especially if this guy's in his 30s, then that would mean his girlfriend's in her early 40s or mid 40s. And it's like, you know, the clock has kind of run out for the most part for her. So if he wants to have children and he goes through with it, he won't be having kids. Unless he stays with her for a few years, maybe five, ten years down the road. And when Maybe when he's in his 40s, he can always get divorced then and then date somebody 15, 20, 25 years, whatever, younger. Younger women like older guys. They always have because they want competence. They want safety. They want a man that knows what he's doing. They want a smooth operator. Like the song goes, smooth operator. And quite frankly, young guys are just not smooth operators. They don't know what they don't know yet. He says, in a way, I feel like I'm selling for somebody I don't see myself with in 20 years. Well, if you don't see yourself with her in 20 years, you you definitely should not get married. I mean, you already... You already kind of know. It's just you feel guilty about it. And that's these feelings of guilt are what caused me to go through with my marriage because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I didn't want to hurt my wife's feelings. I didn't want to break her heart. But it was a lot worse waiting and getting married and then later pulling the plug on it because it was messy and it was expensive and it wasn't a lot of fun. It, you know, it didn't take long to get into the marriage, but it took several years because we had a house to sell and the thing was is that we had bought the house. It was a brand brand new house. We'd lived in it for two, three years or had it two, three years. I guess, I guess it was at that point. And so why would people buy a house that's a couple of years old when they could – because they're still building new ones. And when they could just build a brand new one and, and have it painted the colors they want and have all the options they want, the, col- the carpet they want and all the other things. So you're competing with a, a builder who can build a brand new product. And so it, it was hard to sell that proper. That's why we ended up selling it on a lease purchase. And then it took several years before that person that bought it could close it. And so we still had a business deal together that had uh, you know, some real estate that had to be disposed of even after we were getting in the process of getting divorced. So it took, I think it was like three years to finally get the divorce done, the paperwork signed. And I was only married a year. We didn't have any kids. And so it was a lot of stress involved in that. And going through and explaining to everyone, well, what happened? I was like, you guys just got married. We're like, what happened? It's like, you got to explain the whole story like a thousand times because every time you run into somebody that knows you, they're like, oh, what happened? And then you got to go through 
the whole thing. I wouldn't want that for, for this guy or anybody for that matter, especially with he's already gone. It's like, I don't see myself with her in 20 years. If you don't see yourself with her in 20 years, you shouldn't marry her because then you'd be lying to yourself and lying to her. And it's not fair to her or you. He says, but given the proximity of the wedding, I also feel very guilty about calling off the engagement. I'm in the middle of a perfect shitstorm between breaking somebody's heart and breaking my own. Would you please give me some advice? Listen to your intuition. You already know the answer. It just, it means doing a lot of unpleasant things. It's going to let a lot of people down and it's going to upset a lot of people. But man, going through with a marriage and then divorcing later, when you, when you finally feel like you're going to do something about it, it's, it's a bad way to go, my man. Trust me, you don't want to do it. I've been there. Done that, got the t-shirt. He says, I'm really torn about my situation. Thank you so much for your help. Maybe I didn't find it, but I don't think I've seen videos of you talking about age differences. Thank you for what you do to help us out and sharing your knowledge with the world. Well, it's not just an age difference. It's like you got your intuition that's saying, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. Don't marry her. You're not going to be with this girl in 20 years. You already know the answer to that. I I remember I had a, a girlfriend that I met and... She was in another country, and I remember when I, she came over to, to my hotel and I opened the door, it's like I was thinking, man, I'm going to probably marry this girl, and we're going to have a family and live happily ever after. And I remember when they op- I opened the door, and we kissed and hugged. I just remember my intuitions going, oh, yeah, we're probably going to hook up for a while, and and you won't stay together with her. And mentally, I'm going, I've been, I've been waiting for somebody like this for years. It's like, what are you talking about? And so I'm having my head and my heart are... Say, you know, my heart's just going, my intuition's going, oh, yeah, we're just going to hook up for a while. It's not going to go anywhere. And my mind is going, oh, wait, wait, that's not what my plan was here. And my intuition was right. I didn't like it at the time, and I ignored it, and it was right. And you, you got to learn to listen. Same thing with, with my ex-wife, getting getting married, getting the engagement. It's like I wrote about all that in, in 3% Man. I don't need to rehash it here. But... You gotta listen to that. You gotta learn to trust your heart. As Steve Jobs said, you gotta, you gotta learn your heart. You gotta trust your heart, your intuition, and your curiosity, because they somehow already know what you want to become. And as I pointed out here, it's in your email. You already know what you want to do and what you need to do. You just have to have the courage to do it, because you need to do it for yourself. And quite frankly, you need to do it for your fiance as well. I know it's not a fun and pleasant thing to do. But it's a lot easier to go through a breakup than to go through a divorce once you're married. So it's easier to break up with a girlfriend or a fiance, but it's a lot harder and way more expensive and way more unpleasant to divorce somebody once you're married. And like I said, you'll be feeling guilty because you you got this email out, this video is out there. And if you go through it and you later decide to leave, you're like, it was all out there. It's so obvious. So you gotta trust your intuition. It's telling you something for a reason. Every every single time in my life when I, I've done the opposite of it, I've experienced pain. And and pain is life's way of saying what you're doing is wrong. Your ideas are wrong or flawed, your approach is wrong, and you need to change it. So if you got a question or a challenge, or maybe you got a conundrum like this that you're racking your brain over, your head and your heart are in conflict, and you'd like to get my help. Go to understandrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. 